Hi everyone. I thought I'd share my tips for leveling alts efficiently. By efficiently, I mean hitting 60 with a low slash played. Basically a smooth and time efficient route to 60, not hitting 60 in a week. Number 1. Utilize the rested experience. I'm going to kick in an open door and remind you that the 100% bonus experience from killing mobs is huge. So always log out in an inn. Another way I'm utilizing this is by leveling two alts at once. I'll log in on each one every now and then and level until I'm out of blue experience. Then I harf back to an inn or a capital. As you gain rested experience much faster there compared to just logging out in the wilds. Number 2. Grab a good weapon, at least if you're a physical class. Often you can find pretty cheap rare weapons on the auction house, by rare I mean blue quality, and it's definitely worth grabbing them. But you also don't need to get more than a weapon, as the quality of the weapon is what decides the bulk of your damage output. I understand that for casters your weapon doesn't affect your damage as much, and in those cases it's not that important. But for hunters, rogues and warriors, definitely grab a good main hand. Number 3. Grab cheap but effective consumables. For example, get elixir of agility on your hunter or rogue. They're cheap. Often it's even cheaper to grab the mats and find an alchemist who makes them for you. The most interesting potions and elixirs, which are at least somewhat cheap, are the following. The mana and health potions. All versions besides the major ones. The lesser, the normal and the greater potion of agility. The potion of ogre strength, the elixir of giants, arcane elixir, Gift of Arthas, Sharpening Stones, and Rum Tum Tuber Surprise. Some of these are just minor buffs, but they're usually very cheap. Some of them are pretty good, but they're rather cheap as well. It's well worth paying 50 silver for having 25 more agility for an hour. Number 4. Decide whether you should quest or do dungeons. You can of course do both, but mixing will increase your traveling time. Traveling up and down from Arathi Highlands to Scarlet Monastery will add up. All classes are not as effective in solo play as well, and might benefit from leveling in a dungeon. I would probably split the classes like this. Warriors, Priests, Rogues and Mages in a dungeon, and the Hunter, Druid, Warlock, Paladin and Shaman by questing. Of course, mages can AoE grind, and once shamans get their Wind Fury totem, they will be very valuable for melee cleave groups and dungeons. If you do decide to grind dungeon, it might not be worth doing the dungeon quests, or at least not all of them, depending on how far away you have to travel. It might just be better to do another run than to travel around and turn in all the quests. If you're mainly playing solo, but decide to do a dungeon, you should make sure to have all the quests. Number 5. Check out a questing guide. It's easy to get lost while questing, and that not only slows you down, but also makes things boring and annoying. There are a bunch of guides easily accessible on the internet, just search for it. I'm following these tips on both my hunter and my warrior. My 41 warrior has 3 days and 1 hour played and my 37 hunter has one day and 19 hours played, and I think those times are pretty good. You could also just pay a level 60 to boost you all the way. That's an option if you have insane amounts of gold and can't bother leveling. So, thanks for watching, hope these tips will help you. Like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you wish for a more humane leveling experience.